This Brazilian middleweight competed in the heavyweight division. He was the pride champion for six years. Beat the legendary Kazushi Hunter of Gracie Sakuraba by knockout three times. And for the aggressive conduct of the fight, he was nicknamed in Brazil, Mad Dog. We're talking about the famous Brazilian fighter, Vanderlei Silva. He fought his way through mixed martial arts with his bare fists, literally. His MMA career began in Vale Tudo tournaments, where the match took place without gloves. As close as possible to street fights, with minimum rules, hardened Vanderlei and prepared him for performances in Pride and UFC. Let us join you in remembering the beginning of the career of a Brazilian knockout. He was born in Brazil to a poor family. Parents had to work hard to feed their children. His family didn't have any athletes, but looking at their hard-working parents, Silva became the same at martial arts training. At his first sparring practice, Vanderlei knocked out a more powerful and experienced opponent, but he still spent the night in the gym after studying and working at his father's bar, and he got good at it. Vanderlei started progressing at Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu, and this mixture was very useful to him in the future. He perfected the mastery of the Thai clinch, his knees and elbows in the armory, helped to knock out Silva's top fighters of the time. He later received a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu under Carlos Gracie Jr. In Muay Thai, Vanderlei had 15 fights, and all of them won ahead of schedule. He was twice Brazilian Thai boxing champion, at the age of 20, Silva moved to MMA. Vanderlei's first nine professional battles were in Brazil. As I mentioned earlier, these were Vale Tudo Championships, the Brazilian direction in mixed martial arts, distinguished by a minimum of restrictions and the absence of gloves on the hands of athletes. Silva made his debut on 1 November 1996 at the Brazilian Vale Tudo 6 against 21-year-old Dilson Filo. Vanderlei looked smaller than his rival. In the first seconds, Filo held a femur grip and threw Silva beautifully. There was an intense competition in the parterre, which ended with Vanderlei falling out of the ring. He dominated Silva's parterre, but Silva managed to hit them with his elbows several times. Vanderlei entered the ring with a smile and immediately jumped in with his hooks. In the difference of blows of hands, still, more result was Dilson, who hit several hooks. Then, a powerful knee from Silva's tie clinch, and again a throw from Filo. After Dilson's unsuccessful attempt to sit in full mount, the fighters rose in a stance. A stiff uppercut from Vanderlei, then a bright shootout of hooks and crosses, where he hit harder and harder than Silva. Filo was a little stormy, and the men both began to breathe heavily. Vanderlei hit a hard right cross, and the fighters clashed in the clinch. From the clinch, Silva first applied the permitted pair of blows to the head and the face, then several short but accurate elbows to the jaw. Dilson started sliding down and got another knee in his head that knocked him out. Having lost the round, Silva showed his fighting spirit, and in the fourth minute won his first professional bout. Dilson Filo never got into the ring again. Exactly eight months later, Vanderlei entered the ring again against his fellow countryman, Marcelo Barbosa. He, like Silva's previous opponent, had a negative record of 0-1. Let's see if he managed to change the O in the winning column. The fight lasted only 20 seconds. After the gong, Vanderlei rushed into the attack and hit the right overhand. Barbosa tried to escape in the clinch, but Silva moved him down and turned on his ground and pound. Middle kick hit Marcelo in the head, and he was under the ropes. A couple of punches from above from Vanderlei, and Barbosa, defending himself, fell out of the ring. He immediately grabbed his shoulder and refused to continue the fight. Silva won by TKO, and Marcelo Barbosa had only 14 fights in his career, and only two of them were won. In September 1997, Vanderlei decided to compete in the IVC Vale Tudo International One Day Tournament. All fights took place in one night. Eight contestants fought each other in a circular system. These tournaments were known as extremely violent because almost everything was allowed. The fighters could use absolutely any blow, regardless of whether opponents were standing or lying on the ground. The fight took place in a boxing ring in one round of 30 minutes. Fighters fought with bare hands and tight shorts. 
Silva's first opponent was the American, Sean Borman, for whom this fight was his debut. The fight began with an attempt to walk at the feet of an American, but Vanderlei defended himself from the aisle. Then, a few more failed passes from Bormet, a heavy knee blow from Silva, and a small change of arms, but without prejudice to both fighters, and another foot-to-foot -foot walk from the American. Vanderlei meets a middle kick in the head, Sean falls, and the referee captures Silva's victory by knockout in the second minute of the match. This middle kick permanently discouraged Sean Bormet from pursuing a career in MMA and he never entered the ring again. In the second fight of the evening, Vanderlei Silva joined with compatriot Egidio da Costa. He had a negative record of 5-2, and two, but in the first fight of the evening, he won with a chokehold headlock. The round began with a high kick from Vanderlei and immediately hit the exact jab that Costa had a little bit of a breakdown in coordination. After a brief clinch, Silva threw his opponent onto the ring floor and tried to play football with his head. Once in the guard of Egidio, Vandalay struck his head several times in the face and elbows, and then Silva covers the opponent with a powerful ground and pound. About a dozen hard blows fly into Costa's head, and he surrenders. In the third minute, Vandalay wins by technical knockout in the second match and passes to the final. Egidio da Costa continued his MMA career and finished it in 2011 with a negative record of 6-16. In the final of the fight night, Silva faced fellow countryman Archer Mariano, who also won two victories in the evening ahead of schedule. Today was his debut in the professional world of MMA and developed so far very successfully. After the gong, Silva decided to exchange his hands, and Mariano did not mind reciprocating. There were a couple of significant hooks from Vandalay and a pair of knees from the Thai clinch. A shootout with the low kicks, and Archer hit the counter left hook. With an unsuccessful back fist from Mariano, Silva retaliated by jamming the opponent in a corner and making a good attack with hooks and uppercuts. There were indeed a few hard shots, but Artur survived and managed to slap a pair of hard jabs. Both fighters had seeps near the eyes. Silva had a decent dissection, and it's not clear how it worked if Mariano took all the damage. A productive left hook from Artur, and a series of returns from Vanderlei, where it hit hard on the right, and a dense left hook on the way out of the clinch. Both fighters are already a little tired, and reduced activity. Mariano began to work first, but Silva caught him in the head with a good high kick and threw a series of hooks at the enemy. Both fighters were breathing heavily and had bloody faces. After a protracted passive stance, Vandalay hit the left hook while Artur resented the ref. After Silva's attack, Mariano snapped, but suffered more damage. Vandalay was in front of him for significant blows, but his dissection became very dangerous for the eye. The doctor examined the wound and did not allow the fight to continue. In the 14th minute of the round, Silva suffered his first defeat by stopping from the doctor. Although he was ahead of his opponent by points, Archer Mariano started his career well in the MMA, but for some reason finished it quickly. He had four more fights, two of which were won, and ended his career. In August 1998, Silva returned to IVC6, but it was a short tournament of only three fights. He battled American fighter Mike Van Arsdale in the main fight of the evening. The American was an undefeated fighter with a record of 4-0. The first three victories he won in the same one-day tournament as last time Vandalay. From the first seconds of the fight, Silva rushed into the attack with hooks and almost fell on the takedown. A tight cross in the corner of the ring swallowed an American and tried to take a takedown. The clinch was more successful with Vandalay in his knees. After tearing the clinch, Arsdale put a pair of sidekicks into the hole and held the takedown. The American dominated the parterre and inflicted several successful blows to his hands and head.
After climbing up the stance, Silva applied a tight knee to the body. Mike, running away from the attack, turns around, and the Brazilian, his easy move, rolls over the floorboard on the ring and punches a hard soccer kick to the back of the head. In four minutes, Silva wins by knockout. Mike Van Arsdale subsequently competed in various organizations, and after his loss, went on to a four-win streak, but then lost four in a row and ended his MMA career. The next fight was the debut of Silva's new UFC, the most prestigious MMA organization in the world, then only gained momentum and organized the tournament in Brazil. This was in October 1998, and UFC matchmakers brought together two promising Brazilian fighters of the time. Vanderlei came on short notice, replacing an injured fighter to perform in the main event of the evening. The video about him was recently released on our channel. Follow the link that will appear on the screen to get acquainted with this cool fighter. I told you about that fight too, but let's go over it again. Vitor Belfort had a black Gracie jiu-jitsu belt and excellent boxing skills. For Vitor, this was the sixth fight in the organization, and all of his fights except one were in the UFC. His professional record was the same as Silva's, 5-1. This match lasted only 44 seconds. Vandalay started the fight with a pair of low kicks, but then Belfort hit two runs and shook Vandalay. And after that, Vitor did not stop. He was running with these crosses ahead, and Silva was running back and taking them, until one hit the net and fell. Vitor scored a few more crosses from above, and the referee, Big John McCarthy, crossed his arms over his head to stop the fight. It was a spectacular knockout, of course. Such was the unsuccessful debut of Vanderlei Silva in the UFC promotion. But the purposeful and strong spirit of the Brazilian went on to the championship tops. After failing UFC, Vanderlei returned to his home promotion and performed at IVC 9, The Revenge, in January 1999. He fought in the main fight of the evening with American Adrian Serrano, 13 years older than Vandele. He was an experienced fighter with a good professional record in MMA, 14-4-2, although he began to perform like a pro in the same year as Silva. After the gong, Silva charged the attack with a series of blows with his hands at different angles. Serrano defended himself as best he could, but he missed the two hard hooks that cut him down, and the Brazilian finished the fight with a powerful soccer kick to the head. The fight only lasted 22 seconds, and Adrian Serrano, after this loss, went on to a series of nine consecutive wins. In April of the same year, Silva again competed in the IVC 10 World Class Champions. It was a light heavyweight title match against American Eugene Jackson, nicknamed The Wolf. In the last 11 fights, he lost only once. Jackson started the fight with a result jab and left hook and went on to attack, but Silva captured the American in a tie clinch and struck two knees in the head. Eugene fell, then jumped up quickly and almost caught a soccer kick in the head. The Wolf falls and tries to defend himself, but Silva, as the hunter, catches his prey and deals a dozen finishing blows. In 32 seconds, the referee stops this beating. Vandalay wins his first World Light Heavyweight Championship. After this bout, Eugene Jackson competed in the UFC, but retired from the promotion with a negative record of 3-4. and four. After a spectacular win in the title bout, UFC agents offered to play at the UFC 20 tournament. Just over a month later, there wasn't much time to prepare, but Silva agreed. It was Vandalay's first professional fight outside his native Brazil. The tournament was held on April 27, 1999, in Birmingham, Alabama, USA, where the Brazilian always dreamed of performing. Vandalay's rival was American fighter Tony Patera. He had only two fights in his career and was an undefeated fighter. Silva wanted to prove to his fans that his debut with Belfort was simply unlucky. After the gong, Vandalay attacked with his hands, but Patera immediately made his way into the corpse. Silva defended himself from the pass, and the men fought at the clinch. Many of the knees on the hull of the clinch from the Brazilian, and some of them were significant blows. Vandalay grabbed the double hook, and started hitting his knees in the head. 
Tony escapes from the clutch, and Silva clamps the head of an American in a tie clinch, and inflicts several powerful blows to the jaw. The American first swims, and then falls on the canvas of the octagon. The referee didn't even let to finish off the American, because it no longer made sense. The dream of Vanderlei Silva came true, and came true in front of American fans. Tony Patera had three more matches, and finished his MMA career with a negative record of 2-3-1. So bright was the start of the career, and it was such spectacular were the first 10 fights of the Brazilian knockout. For severe blows comparable to axe blows, and piercing glances during the greeting before the fight, Vandalay Silva was nicknamed the Axe Murderer. He did not become a UFC champion, but his fights were always spectacular and interesting. Therefore, he's the winner of three awards of the organization, Battle of the Evening, and three Knockout of the Evening, in both 2001 and 2004. His fights against Quentin Jackson and Chuck Liddell have been recognized by reputable publications as Silva's Fighter of the Year. If you watch this video without a subscription, sign up for the channel right now. Put the like and press the bell to avoid missing the next video.